Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jacob Angeli Chansley? He is also known as the QAnon shaman. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So starting with the background, we see that Jacob Angeli Chansley is also known as Jake Angeli. In addition to being called the QAnon Shaman, he is also referred to as simply Q Shaman and Yellowstone Wolf. So there's a lot of alternative names going on here. He was born sometime around 1988. At the time of making this video, he is 33. He went to high school in Phoenix, Arizona, and attended a community college in Glendale, Arizona. While there, he studied topics like philosophy, religion, psychology, and ceramics. He enlisted in the Navy in 2005, but was eventually dismissed because he refused to receive a vaccination for anthrax. He claims to have worked as an actor, and he has self-published two books. However, at the time of making this video, he is unemployed. He was well known in Arizona for attending far-right rallies and protesting outside of the Arizona Capitol. He often wore a distinctive costume. It included a furry coyote tail headdress, horns, tan pants, and red, white, and blue face paint. In addition, he did not wear a shirt. Chansley is a conspiracy theorist. Specifically, he has invested in the QAnon conspiracy. He believes that Donald Trump will save the world from a massive conspiracy of high-level officials. Chansley ran into some legal problems based on his behavior on January 6, 2021, during the riots in Washington, D.C. On that day, he entered the Capitol building wearing his typical costume and carrying a spear. Chansley allegedly left a note on the desk of Mike Pence in the Senate chamber. The note read, It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. Chansley would later say that the police were blocking access, but then they let the crowd through, so he didn't break the law. On January 9, Chansley was arrested. He was charged with six counts, two felonies related to interfering with law enforcement during the commission of a civil disorder, obstructing a congressional proceeding, threatening congressional officials, and disorderly conduct. He was also charged with four misdemeanors. The prosecution had initially argued that Chansley was part of some type of kidnapping or assassination plot, but later they admitted they didn't have evidence to support that claim. This doesn't mean that they were fans of Chansley. The prosecution also said that he has repeatedly demonstrated traumatic erratic behavior and inability to conform to societal norms and an unwillingness to appreciate the consequences of his actions. They went on to say that he abides by his own belief system, acts accordingly regardless of the criminal consequences, and brings others along with him. The prosecution also had some thoughts on Chansley's mental health. He had a substance use history that involved marijuana and psychedelic drugs, and he had strongly held false mystical beliefs. Chansley is represented by an attorney named Albert Watkins. Watkins has argued that Chansley did not hide his identity. That's kind of an understatement. He said he was unarmed, although he did have that spear, not violent, not destructive, obeyed the orders of law enforcement officers, and had acted based on an invitation by Donald Trump. Watkins noted that Chansley had no criminal record, loves nature, meditates, practices yoga, and eats only organic food. So I was following him with the no criminal record part, but then with the nature and the meditation, I'm not sure how that means that Chansley was not a criminal. Maybe he was just saying he has other interests that keep him busy, so he really can't be a criminal. At another point, Watkins said that Chansley took seriously the countless messages of President Trump. He believed President Trump. Chansley had hoped for a pardon from Donald Trump, but after that didn't happen, Watkins released a statement saying that Chansley regrets very, very much having not just been duped by the president, but being in a position where he allowed that duping to put him in a position to make decisions he should not have made. That seems kind of wordy for what he was trying to say. Looking at a number of statements that Chansley has made, we get an idea of what he believed. Here is a list of some of his beliefs. All over the globe, 
governments are occupied by central banking institutions which loan the government money with interest. They use their billions or trillions of dollars to build deep underground bases. Apparently, these bases are supposed to be everywhere, very intricate and complex, in mountainsides and such. In these bases, they research top-secret technology, like infinite energy, anti-gravity, and cloning. These elite criminals, who, I guess, occupy the bases and do other things, also happen to worship Satan. They want to institute a one-world government so that they can enslave the population through debt. Members of QAnon are able to decipher secret codes in Trump's tweets and other digital sources. It gives them the knowledge to fight the evildoers. They know information that other people cannot know. They have woken up, but the rest of the world is still sleeping. As far as Donald Trump, Chansley believes that Trump is a whistleblower. He was elected president, so all the evildoers thought that Trump was on their side. But then, surprise, Trump flipped around and exposed the conspiracy. So it's like Chansley thought that Trump was a secret agent, keeping his head down and playing along. I wonder what part of Trump's behavior could have led him to that conclusion. Believing Trump is inconspicuous in a crowd would be like thinking you could wear buffalo horns, coyote fur, face paint, and no shirt, and not stand out during a riot at the Capitol. So now that I think about it, maybe I can imagine how he incorrectly assessed Trump. Chansley believes that the key to figuring out everything is learning how to read between the lines. We see this a lot with conspiracy theorists. They find more between the lines than is written in the rest of the book. They could find a way to read between the lines when looking at a stop sign. Chansley's message to other members of QAnon is don't stop talking. That's like telling Joe Biden to please keep making gaffes. No worries, it'll definitely happen. Chansley said as a shaman, he was like a multidimensional or hyperdimensional being. He is destined to ascend to another reality. I wonder if he has not already achieved that goal. He doesn't seem to be in our reality. I also wonder if multidimensional beings have to have special phone plans. I bet the rates for interdimensional calls are pretty high, and dialing the numbers must take forever. Chansley claims to perceive multiple frequencies of light beyond his five senses, which I guess is good news for him because he also believes that televisions and radios emit specific frequencies that are inaudible and affect brainwaves. One of the things we see in the case of Jacob Chansley is that conspiratorial beliefs can be dangerous, but it's not really always necessarily clear. People could look at Chansley and think, this guy is really dangerous, but at the same time, they could also look at him and think, perhaps he needs mental health care more than imprisonment. His attorney suggested that we cannot consider all of the protesters the same. It's like he's saying that just because Chansley was there, it doesn't mean he was as dangerous as other people who were there, which I think is a good point. It's important not to group all of these people together. Some people may have had organized plans that were, again, dangerous, but other people may have been struggling with delusions or quasi-delusions. I also find it interesting that the attorney is focusing on Trump. I think this is a good strategy. By committing to a false belief about a stolen election, Trump provided a large number of people verification that their conspiratorial beliefs could be correct. He legitimized the nonsense using his role as president. For many years, conspiracy theorists have been challenged by evidence. So many times they believe in these fanciful theories, but then they can never confirm even the most basic parts of the theory. With Donald Trump, here we have a person who was president, offering the conspiracy theorist a way out of this cycle of being proven wrong. This was their chance to shine. This was their chance to show the world that they were not delusional. They finally had an ally who was powerful. Unfortunately, all they really showed the world was that they were gullible. Their irrational thinking style, combined with Donald Trump's reckless deception, was a perfect storm for the conversion of nonsense to action. I think what gets lost in all these stories of the rioters is just how important Trump's deception was in their actions. His legitimate authority was an incredibly powerful motivator for them. It was like all their dreams came true. Trump was able to facilitate movement from talking and protesting to more drastic action. It was like he activated them. He was the missing ingredient to push their behavior over the edge. 
I think that many of the people charged with crimes in connection with January 6, 2021, really do have a plausible defense strategy. We have seen cases before where people committed crimes because of their parents, teachers, police officers, or other authority figures, right? Those people encouraged them in certain instances. Using a police officer as an example, if an officer told somebody to steal something from a store, like the officer said it was necessary for official business, that would definitely shape how somebody would view the guilt of the person who did the stealing. How much stronger would the defense be if the President of the United States instructed somebody to do something illegal or created an environment in which that instruction was implied? Now, I don't know if Chansley had delusions or all this is an act or something else explains his behavior, but clearly some of those conspiracy theorists do have delusions. I think these circumstances help provide an answer to an important question. How do we help people who have delusional thoughts? Should we tell them that they are wrong? Should we show them contradictory evidence? Those strategies usually do not work. No strategy actually has a great record of effectiveness. What we learned here is what not to do. They shouldn't be encouraged to act on a false claim. This seems like common sense, but apparently it escaped many. Those are my thoughts on the Jacob Chansley case, the so-called QAnon shaman. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.